are you not making sales because you've tried to systemize too soon? This is a question that I talk to my clients about all of the time. A lot of my clients will say to me, you know, should I turn on Facebook ads? Should I be, um, you know, paying for somebody else to get me leads into my business? Because getting leads is one of the hardest things about having a small business. And a lot of the time, it's not the core skill set that you have. You've got your skill set in coaching, in, you know, um, strategy, in finance, in whatever it is. And you're trying to bring that to mass people. And now you're having to market and show up and figure it out. And a lot of the time, people just want to outsource that and they just want to go, somebody else can do this for me. Now, one of the things that I always say to my clients is you want your outsourcing to be self-sustained. So that means if you are making money into your business, you can then use that money to pay to make more money into your business. But you have to have a foundation in place first. So I was having this conversation yesterday with a client around how they can create a system that then becomes an automated system, that then becomes an ad-fueled system. And one of the easiest way to do this is through a funnel. Like I've spoken about funnels so many times, you guys know what they are. And this is what's really, really important, is that if you can say, as I build this funnel, I'm gonna test every single element of it and make sure that each of those elements work, And I know that if I plug, you know, 10 people into the front end, I get two sales out of the back end. Then you've got a system and then you can scale that. But what you've got to think about is how do we build that system and how do we get the income in to then start to put that money into automation, into, um, you know, getting additional clients through other methods. Now, when you're building your funnel, there's, re- there's key things that you need to make sure work. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. So the very first thing that you need to settle on is the offer that you're going to sell. That offer has to be something that your ideal client wants to buy. It has to get your ideal client a result. It has to work for your ideal client to the point where they would recommend it to somebody. In the world that we live in right now, in the online space, there are a lot of people who are offering things that do not get results. There are a lot of people who are offering things that they are not actually 100% sure whether it's going to work. And I don't mean like, you know, a client's going to come in and not do the work and then expect the results. I mean, as in a client comes in, does absolutely every single thing and it still doesn't work. So when we're living in a world like that, where a lot of people are coming into the online space and just trying to do things that might make them money rather than things that they actually have expertise in, it can be very challenging because the trust has been broken multiple times. So you have to be able to say, this is the result I got my client. I had like one of my favorite messages yesterday Um, one of my long-term clients said to me that she should be paying off her mortgage next year. Like, that is what we do this for. How incredible is that? So when you're looking at this and you're saying, what does this look like? How am I going to create an offer that gets results that people will recommend? That has to be the starting point, because if you don't have that, nothing else matters. If you don't have something solid to sell, nothing else matters. Once you've got something solid to sell and you go, yes, this will get results. I know that it's good. I know what it is. I know what, like, how it's going to help people. Then you step back into how am I actually going to market this? And if you're going to use a funnel, you look at it and you go, okay, what is the lead magnet that's going to be best to lead people into this? And something I've been doing with one of my other clients is we have been building different lead magnet systems over the last three months. So each month we build a different lead magnet system that all leads into the same program. And we've just been testing how many people do each of these different lead magnets get in. When we go into different Facebook groups, when we go into different networking events, when we show up in different places, how many people do each of these different topics get in? And all of these topics are covered in the program. So when we 
pull through and we access and we say, okay, let's get the raw data. Now we know, okay, this is the lead magnet that performs the best. This is the lead magnet that works the best. Now we've got this list of people. Now we want to test how we actually convert those into sales. Now, there's loads of ways to do this, okay? You can run live challenges, you can run webinars, you can do in-person things. Like there's loads of ways to do this depending on the business that you have and what you want to sell. But if I use this specific client as an example, we're going to basically test direct marketing. So direct emails versus physical invitations, direct physical post invitations. And in her industry, she's done the physical post thing before. It's worked really, really well. So we want to basically test those two theories against each other. If we send the same invitation to 25 people in person, like in a physical like letter and 25 emails, what are the results that we get on the back of that? How does that position against each other as a strategy? Once we know that, we can then start to systemize. But say, for instance, we came in and we said, we're going to build lead magnet number one. We're going to use this um, method, so the, the direct email method, as an example, to sell this offer. And then it didn't work. Or it, it got some results, but not very good results. Then once we've done that whole thing, we have to go back to the beginning and we have to start again. Rather than testing each of the stages individually at the time. So we tested the lead map over three months. We now know which one performs best. We now know, okay, this is the one we return on ads for if we wanted to really grow that email list and get loads of new people in the front door. Once we've got all of those people and we've got all of their information, what's the best way to contact them? How do we then go about creating a system? And when we create a system, a lot of people are trying really hard to be completely hands off in their business. So they'll they'll say, oh yeah, no, like I'm not going to send physical post letters to somebody because you know that's going to take too long. But it doesn't have to. Like, yes, obviously you're going to have to physically post a letter, fine, but you can template out everything. You can have a template letter. You can just change their name, change the, like, you know, like the address. Like it doesn't have to be hard. You can still template everything and automate and batch. But you've got to think about actually what is the best way to engage with people? Right now in a space where, you know, people are getting hundreds of emails and everyone's pushing Facebook ads is it actually a good idea to do something in person? Is it actually a good idea to do something different and show up in a different way? When I ran the summit, that had such a good engagement and it was so different rather than just saying to people, you know, here, download this lead magnet and get onto my email list. I said, come to the summit. We're going to do five days. We're going to have 20 speakers. It's going to be incredible. And on the back of that, I made sales into my big program. On the back of that, we had people who are now warm leads who are likely to come into other things. On the back of that, I made sales into the mini program that I'm running at the moment, the Unlock Your Business Potential, which if you want to join us, there's still two places you can come and join us. But this is one of those things where we can look at this and we can say, not everything has to be completely systemized all of the time. And actually, when you're, when you're starting out, I want to argue that you're not trying to just automate as quickly as possible. You're not trying to pre-automate everything. You're trying to figure out what works and then automate that. And this is where so many people go wrong. Yes, you can systemize. Yes, you can say, okay, I'm going to systemize my social media. I'm going to batch. I'm going to figure out how to do this. You know, one of the things I do is these long form videos, I then take them and I put them into AI software and it pulls out short, you know, 60 second clips that I can then use on my social media. That saves me so much time in having to create additional content or additional ways to show up. And that's an automated process. Brilliant. I could batch things together. So I will batch the podcast recordings where I'll go out to, say, 12 people and say, we're going to record in these two weeks. And then I've got those 12 episodes to put out over the next three months. You can absolutely systemize and batch certain bit like pieces of your business to make them easier in order for you to have more time to focus on sales. But going straight in 
and just building a funnel from scratch when you've not done any testing in the market, when you don't know whether people want to buy the thing you sell, when you don't know whether um, people need that particular lead magnet. Like you should always be surveying, polling, asking your audience, what is it they need? What are they struggling with? How can you help them? If you come from a place of being of service, of always trying to be of service, things will be so much easier in the long run for you because you won't be just making things up and putting them out into the world and hoping for the best. You'll actually be going into the world saying, I'm going to check what people actually need. And this is where things become easier. So for instance, this unlock your business potential. I polled my my, my audience. I said, what do you guys want? A number of people said that they wanted this specific thing. So I said, okay, brilliant. We're going to do that. And we've started the group. It's going. On the back of the podcast, I've been polling to ask people what um, healing support do they want. So we're going to do a um, eighteen week like healing um, mini program, which is going to be so exciting, and I can't wait to run it. Knowing that there are people in my audience that are wanting to do that, knowing that there are people in my audience that are like, "Yes, this is what I want in my life." And this is what I want you to think about rather than just creating things and putting them out into the world and, you know, hoping for the best. You want to create a market where people are going to buy the thing first. You want to create a, an understanding that actually people need this thing. They need this result. They need this outcome. They want to show up in this way. They want to get this help. They want to pay for this help. That is the critical thing. I was saying the other day, um, to the girls in the Unlock Your Business Potential program. When people say to me, my ideal client can't afford to pay me, I tell them that is not your ideal client. Your ideal client can afford to pay you and then some. Your ideal client can afford to pay you everything that you are worth and then some. That is your ideal client. What you need to find is what is the thing that that ideal client will pay for. What is the help that that ideal client will pay for? It's so easy to try lean into desperation, like, oh, you know, there's these people who have absolutely nothing and they're so desperate and they really want to, you know, take my, what I do, earn, um, earn uh, income. Great. But at the same time, it's not going to work in the sense of they can't pay you for the thing that you do. So yes, you can be of service through free content. Yes, you can be of service through lead magnets and free items that people can get access to. But you can't make that group of people the only people that you try and help. Your paid offers have to speak to people who actually want your help, people who can actually pay for your help, because that is what it means to be in business. So you've got to think of, yes, how can I be of service? But how can I be of service to people who can pay me in the, in the long run? And if you keep coming at your business from that place and you keep testing, so I'm going to build three lead magnets and get them out into my audience as quickly as possible and test which one has the best results. Then I'm going to test how I convert people. If you can go through each of these different steps, it's going to make the whole process so much easier in creating this business and in creating something that is sustainable and pays you over decades. We're not wanting to be a flash in the pan. We're not wanting to be a silver bullet. We're not wanting to be a viral overnight sensation. What we're wanting to create is something that pays us consistently over decades. That's what we're aiming for, okay? So as you're going through this, I want you to think about what have you actually tested in your business? What are the things that you can look at numbers for and say, yeah, that performs really well. When I put that out, that type of content performs really well. That type of lead magnet performs really well. This offer performs really well. Or if you're sitting and saying, I put out this lead magnet and I get absolutely no people onto my email list, something needs to change. Or I have this offer and nobody's buying it, something needs to change. Either the positioning of the offer or the outcome that people get, or the way that you deliver it, something needs to change in order to make sure that every single element of what you're doing is getting a result. 
And that is what I want you to focus on. That is what I want you to dive into in your business and really think about this week. Now, if you do want support doing this, we are one week into Unlock Your Business Potential. You can come, join, catch up and do the next five weeks live with us. We are diving into the strategy of each of these different elements of making sure that each of these different things get you results and making sure that you're creating things that get results for clients, get results for you and get you paid over the long term. So if you want to come in, I'll put a link below. You can come and join us. And I literally am so excited for your business to be a huge success now and in 2025 and for the decade to come. So I will see you guys next week.